Thank you for the invitation. And be patient with my English. Well, in my talk, I will try to remind you the main definitions of poverty from a public policy discipline perspective, considering that you accept the definition of, that the definition of problem is uh, conditioned that the dissolution of, the, of a public problem like poverty is determined by the definition of the problem. Uh, according to the definition of your problem, you try to solve the problem. So uh, my accent is going to be on the many or several definitions of poverty problem. Why poverty reduction has become an international concern, there is not international consensus on guidelines for defining and measuring poverty. In pure economic terms, poverty is mainly income poverty. And income poverty is when a family's income fails to meet a nationally, federally, established threshold that differs across countries. Refers to families or individuals whose uh, economic position, economic position understood as command of resources, falls below some minimal social acceptance level. For example, international standard of extreme poverty is set to the possession of less than one US dollar a day. Frequently, poverty is defined in either relative or absolute terms. Absolute poverty measures poverty in relation to the amount of money necessary to meet basic needs such as a food, clothing, shelter. The concept of absolute poverty is not concerned with broader quality of life issues or with the overall level of inequality in society or the overall level of exclusion in a society. The concept, therefore, fails to recognize that individuals have important social and cultural needs. This and similar criticism <coughs> led to development of the concept of relative poverty. Relative poverty defines poverty in relation to the status, status of other members of the society. People are poor if they fall below prevailing standards of living in a given social context. An important criticism of both concepts, relative and, and absolute, is that they are largely concerned with income and consumption. To further develop uh, the definition of the concept of relative poverty, three perspectives are relevant. The income perspective, as before mentioned. The basic needs perspective goes beyond the income perspective to include the need for the provision by a community of the basic social services necessary to prevent individuals and families from falling into poverty. And finally, the capability or empowerment perspective suggests that poverty signify, means a lack of some basic capabilities to function, the lack of autonomy. Social scientists, social scientists' understanding of poverty, on the other hand, is critical of the economical idea of free choice models where individuals control their own destiny and are so the cause of their own poverty. Sociologists generally study the reasons or the causes of poverty, such as the roles of culture, power, political system, social structure, and other factors largely out of the control of the individuals. Accordingly, the multidimensional nature of poverty, in particular social aspects, needs to be understood in order to create more effective programs for poverty alleviation. Today is widely held 
that one cannot consider only the economic part or element or dimension of poverty. Poverty is also social, political, and cultural. Moreover, it is considered to undermine human rights, economic rights, political rights, civil rights, and cultural rights. According to these uh, poverty definitions, the main public policies in the world or anti-poverty programs have two objectives. The one, for the first, to raise income levels of individuals living below the poverty line, or to protect vulnerable individuals or households living above the poverty line from shocks that might push them into poverty. Uh, the the, the anti-poverty programs may be categorized according to whether they entail transfers to the poor or whether they are intended, intended to assist in the accumulation of improvements of their assets. There are two types of anti-poverty programs. Transfer-based programs and asset-asset based programs. The former, the former programs can be further subdivided into programs that involve cash transfers or in-kind transfers in which cash of goods and services are transferred to poor unconditionally or in exchange for using health and educational services for employment in public works projects etc. In addition to transfer-based programs, asset-based programs are intended to encourage and support the accumulation of productive use of capital goods that can be transferred across generations. Some comments on, on this uh, rapid uh, uh, description of the, of the policies and the definition of poverty. Some comments on current public policies. The first one. The empirical knowledge of the effectiveness of these different intervention across programs, across countries, and over time remains limited. However, there is a conclusion that deserves your attention. Anti-poverty programs that have proven beneficial in middle-income countries have shown less of an impact in low-income countries less developed infrastructure, weak or failing states, extreme regional disparities, social or political polarization, and low growth environments are just some factors that affect anti-poverty performance in low income countries. Second, other distinction. We do not fully understand the differential effects of anti-poverty efforts on those who are occasionally poor, maybe in America and Europe after crisis, and those who more or less are permanently poor. There is a, a smart distinction between the chronic poor versus transient, transient poor. Um, a third comment. The public policy that is decision-making inspired by a multidimensional and multifactorial concept of poverty have centered actions and resources on building capacity. No, it's not just transfers or, or, or in-kind, cash or in-kind. It's not just to improve assets. It's to building capacity or developing capacities of individuals and families in order to assist them to break their intergenerational social destiny and to overcome their lack of autonomy as well. Lack of autonomy, which is the main cause and the main effect or outcome of poverty. Building capacity implies public policies creating, developing, or facilitating access to health services, access to education, quality of education, 
opportunities uh, uh, to microcredit for housing, social insurance uh, forms, and particularly creating, developing opportunities for develop skills to act in job market and to develop skills for a value-added production. In some countries, maybe most interesting, uh, public anti-poverty programs means building social capital and building social economy or social impact economy, as, as was mentioned in, in the morning. Uh, my fourth uh, uh, comment is the dominant characteristic of anti-poverty programs is their governmental character rather than social character. We, we perform social policies without society. No? This is interesting, no? Anti-poverty programs without the involvement of regions, families, individuals affected by poverty. So the dominant characteristic of anti-poverty programs is their governmental character uh, rather than a social character. And the tools of government are limited. The governments are mainly four tools. Law, resources, public resources, public spending, uh, information, and uh, organization. They have uh, organizations, uh, institutes, uh, programs, personnel, and so on. But uh, these four tools are able to control or to solve some problems, but not, are not able to control and solve other kind of problems, like poverty, that have other dimensionals that escape, that are uh, out from the reach of, of policies. So the, the, so the social involvement, family, neighborhoods, individual involvement, is needed in order to, to solve or to control the more destructive aspects of poverty. Thank you very much.